Hey guys, we're here today in Valheim, and we're going to take a look at how to build a stone building without using any iron beams for support or braces. This building has a decently large floor plan, and I like to use it for cooking and personal house and storage. You can see here there's a lot of room up top with some dark wood roofing, plenty high enough ceilings for smoke, and a basement. Basement down here is supported with stone pillars, still gives you room for chests, along with a bed and a lot of room for extra comfort items. The ceiling for the basement here is supported entirely by the pillars and not any iron beams. So it helps with the cost, although it will be a pretty high cost for stone, it will not be any iron, which can be helpful. This build will take approximately 2,200 stone, 175 tar, and 375 wood. This number is for the building materials and does not include any of the additional or optional comfort items or crafting items. And I will be building this building in the meadows, however, it should work in the black forest and the plains as well, as long as you can find a decently flat area that is open enough and you might be able to clear trees out of your way in order to make it so. It's probably hard to do in the swamp or the mountains given that you have to dig down and you can't find a flat spot in the mountains very well. And it may actually help you in the plains a little bit given that it is entirely made of stone and has good defense and should be able to protect you decently against the fuelings. Now I like to flatten ground as little as possible so the first thing I'm going to do is find a decently flat location and then I'm going to place an 8x12 stone outline and just flatten the ground as needed. Keeping in mind that the entrance to this building will be on the 8 piece side and not the 12 piece side. Once you have the outline done, then you can go through and flatten out a little bit of the terrain to maybe remove some of this grass coming through the stone floor. But since we have our outline, we don't have to do a ridiculous amount and we can now see what actually needs to be messed with. Alrighty, now we'll go to where we're going to put the entrance to our building and I'm going to make it these two squares right here. So I'm going to place a small two by one wall on either side of it. And then you can attach a dark wood gate to the interior section of that on both sides. You can do the gates on the exterior part of those walls. I just prefer them on the interior. I think it looks better when the building is all done. And I think it operates a little nicer, but that is completely personal preference. From there, we're gonna go around the rest of the building with two by one walls, remembering that with this stone, we need to offset each row that we go up vertically with a one by one to make sure the seams don't run into each other and that they are overlapped properly, both for look and stability. You can do this entire building in the larger 4x2s, but it does make the windows a little bit harder to put in if you decide to have any of those. And it can be awkward to start a second row with these because pillars are not wide enough to offset it properly, and the 2x1s are not tall enough to do that either. The only way to offset them properly is to place a 2x1 brick, and then place the next wall on the side of it, but that overlaps on the outside, so during the corner section of these, you will have to figure out something to make it look nicer. It is more expensive to do the small 2x1s, but we are going to do it for the look, and it will give you an idea how much this building will cost with the most expensive set. We'll continue around the entire building, making sure you properly overlap every brick you're doing and each row up. We're going to do a total of four rows high. Now, if you are going to place any windows in this building, you can do it after you're done doing the entirety of the walls or as you're going. It depends on how much forethought you're giving it. If you want to do it while you're going, I recommend being at least one brick off the ground and one brick from the roof. That means that our window will be two by two. So if our window was going to go here, for example, we would simply remove one of our bricks and have a two by one opening. Then all you would need to do is on the next level up, is to make sure you place a one by one by the windows opening on both sides of it. And that would give us our perfect opening. The fourth row would then just connect straight over with a two by one brick and you would have an open window. Again, you can do this after you place everything and then just knock out the bricks you'd like or you can do it as you go. But it will be that pattern each time where you simply skip a two by one brick on the lower half of the window and the upper half will need to be closed out with one by one bricks on either side of it to maintain the right brick overlay and placement. This will probably take a little while, but go ahead and go around the entirety of your building with this brick placement and place windows in any areas you would like. Mm -hmm. 
All right, once you have the entire outline done with any windows popped in where you'd like, I recommend doing the windows with crystal on the exterior portion of the stone to give yourself a little window mantle you can use on the inside. You can also do the windows with shutters, but I don't think the wood looks too great with the stone. And obviously you could use an iron 2x2, two two, but this build is trying to avoid iron in any way possible, so crystal seemed like the best choice. I am also a fan of decorating the exterior of the window with dark wood beams and giving it a nice trim. For this whole build, we are going to be using 26 degree dark wood roofing, and we're going to overlap one roof panel out on both the front and the back edge and also off the side. In total, you should have five panels of roofing on each side with them meeting up at the middle at the peak. All right, once you have the roof in place, we now need to fill in the angled walls underneath it. You'll do the exact same thing for the front and the back. We'll be placing a stone staircase with the slight overhang happening to the inside of the building and we'll place it all the way down in the corner where it meets up nicely with the roof. After this, you'll place a 2 by one along the wall keeping in pattern with your wall, and place a stone staircase right on top of that. You'll continue this along the entire way and making sure you offset your one by ones in order to keep the right pattern and slowly increasing the height while adding stone staircases as you go up. In order to effectively get the last piece of the stone staircase in, you may have to destroy one roof piece where you're trying to place them, so you can aim effectively. With the exception of that, there's only one issue with this, and that's that you can see some of these stone stairs coming through the roof. However, it is tall enough that it's hard to see from the ground, which shouldn't bother most people. Do this on the front and the back side of the wall, and it'll end up looking pretty good from the interior. Alrighty, once we are all done with the roofing, we are going to work on the basement. You already have your outline here on the inside, and we are just going to pick a corner and use our pick and go down about the same height as our walls in here, so about 8 meters down. You're going to measure your depth down this far with the large 4x2 stone wall, because that's how we're actually going to wall the basement and you'll be able to tell when you are low enough because you'll be able to attach a second wall. Once you're down low enough, then you are going to use the pick and the hoe and just do the rest of the area the same and maybe try and flatten it out a little bit after you're done. Once I get it all dug out, I am going to slightly flatten the ground. It does not have to be perfect, but we are going to be adding a stone floor here. So we don't want any large mounds that are going to pop through it. If you were lucky enough to get your building lined up that the walls came out straight like this, you could just leave the ground earth walls. But I am going for a fancy look, so I am going to place stone bricks, but it is going to cost more. We need to dig some of the walls back a little bit so that the stone brick is showing all the way. And we're going to take four by two walls all the way across it, stacked too high. In order to offset the seams with these and be too high, we are going to have to start with a one by two brick at the corner and then run a four by two off of that to overlap the seams correctly. Back on that start out corner, you just need to run a 4x2 in the wall there and have it shoot into the ground halfway where only half of it is showing and it will not pop out the outside of the building. Go ahead and run this design around the entire perimeter. Alrighty, and once the walls are in, we are going to floor the basement with Typical 2x2 two two stone flooring and just go across the whole thing. Fill in any holes that you need or flatten any ground where you need in order to get it to look nice. 
Also try and make sure that you line up the top of the stone floor with the bottom of these walls that we did and there is no noticeable gap. All right, now we're gonna place some pillars in order to floor this basement area. From the very back of our building, opposite side of our entrance doors, we're gonna go one square tile away and place it in the inside corner of the second tile off the wall. So one full tile should be showing off the back wall and one and a half tile should be showing off our right side wall. Do this on both of the sides coming off both corners. From here, we will be going one and a half tiles back in that same row horizontally. This means that every pillar of ours should be covering the same corner of each two by two square we place on. So from right here, you can see all of my pillars are on the top left corner of these squares. And all of these squares are one and a half tiles off the side wall. You will have completely matching pillar placement on both your left and your right side. And the final pillar you place heading towards your front door will actually be two and a half squares from the front wall. Hopefully that made sense and was explained decently well. And then you're going to place all these pillars too high. Without using iron beams to hold this floor up, the pillar placement is very important and needs to be ran in a certain way in order to get the stone block to stay. You are going to match the stone blocks on the floor, which means all the stone blocks we place on the pillars need to be on the same corner that they are on the bottom. When you're placing this floor, if you try to place the two center tiles, they are going to fall, which means we need to place it in a very particular pattern. You can connect to the outside walls and they have decent stability. And then we need to make sure that we are connecting onto our pillars in the correct pattern. And as you're going, you should be able to tell pretty decently if they're right, because you'll be able to fit two by two squares in all the natural places. You're gonna need to ideally get both sides done before you do the center. And then we'll go over how to place that center section. All right, so like we said earlier, if you place one on the center section, it will snap. Uh, there's no big secret to this. It's simply that you need to start at an edge. Being in the corner, being held by two sections allows it to stay up. And as you continue down the line, it has enough strength with each new row to be able to stay up. Alrighty, and now we are floored. And if you were smarter than me, you would have planned to place your staircase as you were going, but I did not, so we're gonna have to place it afterwards. I'm gonna have my staircase on the back end of the building on the right hand side from the doors. It is this last full row that we have access to since the half row is holding up the wall. I also don't wanna try and squeeze down the stairs on this small pad right here. So I'm going to extend out one whole pad. So it's one and a half pads off the side wall. And then we can destroy the two by two squares in our way. It will likely also be easier to start the staircase from the bottom. And what we're going to do is place in the very opposite corner where we want the landing pad to be a two by two square and put a little staircase going up to it. And now we're just going to run staircases all the way up to our top. You may get lucky and be able to place them on the side wall without any support underneath them. If you are, that works out perfect, and you can just place them there, and you now have a staircase. I like the look of support underneath them, which is something that you may agree with and want to do anyway. If you are okay with them like that, then you have a little extra storage space. If you are wanting to place support underneath the stairs, I recommend placing two by one bricks, and just making sure that the bottom row and the top row overlap in opposite directions. So if we place these two long ways from our location, we'll flip the next row horizontally, in order to flip their seam placement. And you would just do that as you go up under each individual stair. And make sure that the supports directly next to it flip again so that the bottom row does not match the bottom row of the one next to it. And there you go, fully supported stairs. Now to throw a couple decoration things, I like to throw some dark wood beams down each seam to where they are halfway in the two by two blocks and halfway showing and then you can throw a dark wood top piece across the whole thing 
and then cap off the front and the back section by aiming at the beam. And this gives us a little railing for our staircase. One other small deco thing I like to do is in the outside corners of the building, I like to throw dark wood on the corner of the stone. I think it breaks up a little bit of the monotony with the stone and gives it a nice little look. I like to do the same thing to the front gate and I like to use the arcways on the corners because they match the door's curve. And then run long dark wood pieces down the front. And then you can feel free to add yourself some stone stairs out the front or adding yourself a little stone deck if that's what you'd like the look of. And then you can move on to decorating the inside. Now this place is tall enough that you do not need a chimney or anything and you're able to just place hearth or campfires wherever you'd like. This building is kind of roomy, but it is snug if you try to place everything in here such as a full working workshop, forge, smelter, kiln, and blast furnace, all the good stuff. So I prefer to have my own exterior workshop and I like to treat this as a personal home with all your cooking supplies in it. I'm a big fan of placing a hearth in the center of the room, maybe two if you really, really wanna have some fires rolling in here. Make sure you have some iron cooking racks all set up. I designate one corner with a campfire and then go ahead and set it up with your cauldron and all of the associated upgrades. The opposite corner for me near the door, I wanna put a stone oven. And then we still got a lot of room back over here by the rails and the whole area in order to place some other items. I'm gonna use a large table for a little bit more comfort and get some fermenters rolling on there in case you have a, a larger guild and you guys use a lot of mead and potions. And then obviously to have a cauldron in this building at all, we would need a forge. So setting that right at the end of the table is nice if you're not gonna hide it from the ground. You can finish up the touches at the other place with some nice banners. You can throw some chairs down for some added comfort and get the place rolling nicely. And then the basement is perfect for a personal room and storage. Right under the stairs is a great spot for a large bed. Then you slap a nice throne down at the end of the underground hallway for some more added comfort. In this whole basement look, I'm a huge fan of the blue torches for the lighting setting under here. Obviously, just more things that are personal preference. A ton of room in the basement here for some storage chests and some more comfort items if you're trying to max out comfort in this building. You can still see upstairs, even with all of this cooking stuff rolling, there's still quite a bit of room up here. You could utilize this building for more than I am here, but I like to keep things separated into certain areas, and this would definitely be the area I do all my cooking and keep all my food while I actually use my workshop and my forge and workbench things in a different building. The other nice thing about this building is you can have the whole throne set up and the whole throne room look down in the basement here. That way anytime all your friends are being mean to you in the game, you can just come down here, chill out, sit down, and just remind yourself and repeat to yourself, I'm the kink. I'm the kink. I'm the kink. I'm the kink. <laughs>